Okay, what's up, guys? Don't mind the leak, but yes. So today, what I'm going to be working on, this is my daily driver, my Grand Cherokee Jeep. Um, it just, as you previously, if you follow my channel, if you don't follow me, thank you. But if you follow my channel, excuse me, loud plane passing by. If you follow my channel, you have known that I've been chasing uh, a rear end noise as I thought it was my actual bearings. I changed them. I put new tires, everything, wheel alignment. I've also on the mission to change to chase on the mission chasing that noise. Excuse me. I'm a little tired. I found out that. My rear struts are completely blown. So today I'm going to be changing my rear struts. And um, since I actually use this car to tow my boat, I am going to be upgrading and adding something to the suspension to help me or help anyone who has this car that likes to tow or has a car that you you tow stuff with um, the airlift bags. This is step one is obviously take, I, I'm changing both sides. As they say that it's better to change your suspension in pairs. Is that true? I don't really know, but mines, I feel like they're both the side, both sides are blown. As you guys know, and I've said before, I tow with this Jeep. So, and I tow a 24, sorry. Ugh. I tow a 24 footer, so it's not a small boat either. So I can only imagine the wear and tear that, and I drive it every day. So I can only imagine. So I got a deal on eBay for a set that I'm gonna show you guys. I'm currently waiting on them right now as the video, as I'm making this video, I am waiting. So I'm trying to think ahead, have everything off and ready by the time the suspension get here. So yeah, so realistically, I only took off these two clips. You could go as far as taking the entire liner out. I don't see the need to. Then yeah, you can access the two bolts here and the one bolt that you have at the bottom. And that's how you remove them. So let me get the proper tools and I'll be right back. So to remove the bottom bolt, um, the head of the actual bolt is 7th, 8th, and the nut is 15, 16. The top is 19. The way you have to do this, let me get a 19. Again, everybody does things differently. This is just the way I do it, so. Correction, the top bolt is not 19. 
I think it's actually a 16 millimeter. Yep. replace these I would think about like 50k ago and uh so none of my bolts are extremely rusted or hard to take out I try to add NTCs when I put them back in extremely hot and you have ratchets electronic ratchets grab them show you guys right now so when I went over a hole I felt like my car was really bouncy that's right here it doesn't show as it is blown but I'm not a hundred percent sure I know the other side. Let's see how the other side looks. This wasn't the bouncy side, but as I told you, I'm replacing them in pairs. So yeah, so I'm gonna take the other side. You just repeat the same process. And you have to take this off, right? Take this off. There's a bolt, you have to take it off. I don't think the new one come with the hat. So, so yeah, and repeat the same steps to the other side. For the top, you need a 19 millimeter. It's usually a nut with a with a lock. And you take this because you're using this entire setup for the new one. And save it right there. Let me grab the other one. This is the passenger side. It looks good until it like bottoms out. And then it kind of like, it's just bouncy. I don't know. My car was extremely too bouncy. And these are reflex 
shocks and struts. Um, I'm not too sure why I bought these, but if you have a choice, stay away from these. And just my luck. This thing is spinning. So I'm gonna do a, a, a vice grip here. I'm not using these, so it doesn't really matter. And guys, it's about 90 degrees in New York, so you could already imagine it. This garage is even hotter. But before I hit the water, this has to get done. Like so. Able to pull the nut. This, save this, and the dust shield. This dust shield seems out of days, but I'm keeping it. And yeah. Sorry, but Reflex brand, trash. We're going to hold up on this because we're going to this is what I bought and I've noticed since I have this and this is down more I have more space to get this through the spring and what we usually do is these airbags are gonna go through here and give me, um, you can fill up up to like 30, 25 to 30 pounds and it's gonna give me a lot more support when I'm towing. Instead of having the car sagging from the back and kind of, you know, lifting from the front, I can pump them up and, you know, balance the car out. And yep, I went with these. I'll be right back. So the first step is, you have to get rid of this right here. It's like a, like a T. It's just plastic. I took some pliers and cut through it. Then you see the rubber. And here, you're gonna make a, a little hole. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna get a drill for that. You're gonna drill a hole cause the bag is gonna sit here and the line is gonna come out from here. So yeah, so the first step is get rid of this T. On the other side, I'll take a picture to show you how it looks before and after. Mind you, I'm not taking the springs off. You can do this by taking the springs off, but I am not doing that. I'm gonna put you guys here so you guys can see. So, this is gonna go here. somewhat centered and the hole that you drill this is about here I'm gonna find a way to squeeze this all the way in with some zip ties. So this is the final step. All you have to do is do all the steps that you did to take the strut off and just reverse it. You will also need a jack as the new strut does not fully reach up or you can just try to lift it with your hand. I'm very big on preserving your body. So I got a little jack to jack it up until I can actually get some of the thread of the bolt in. 
and I moved forward to connecting the airline to the bag. This step to me is the hardest as you don't have a lot of space to fit any tools, but neither the less is once you get the airline connected, um, I would say try to pump it up to like 15 pounds of air to see with soapy water to see if there's any leaks. Usually this would be where it leaks at, but once you get past that, you're good. Here's a better look at the valve where I place mine's at right here. You take this off, you pump up to the desired air pressure and it feeds both bags, passenger and driver. The kit does come with two of these so you can run um, two valves separately to the back so you can pump whichever side to your desired air pressure. But in my case, I just put them to be both fed by T. As you can see, let me zoom in. That's the T. I checked for any leaks and I don't have any. So yeah, that's it.